What is up you guys, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're going through 10 tips for Premiere Pro to edit a lot faster and make your editing process so much easier. Now all these tips I've acquired during a lot of time of editing, a lot of practice and hopefully it can make your editing process a lot more faster and a lot more simple. So let's jump into the tips. Tip number one guys is very simple, it's basically the organization schemes within Premiere Pro. Now in the day I used to import my files from all kinds of folders from my desktop, from my downloads, from my SSD and then in Premiere Pro I would create folders and start grouping them into the folders and to be more organized. But you can really skip that process by beforehand organizing your files within your folders in your desktop. So for example here in my desktop I have this folder containing three subfolders, each of them separated with the correct video clips from each one. So what I can do is just drag the premium folder, the base folder or the master folder into Premiere Pro. And once in Premiere Pro, we can see that the folder has been imported with the subfolders and the organization schemes that we already had in our desktop. So that's a quick way you can organize your files. Another quick hint for organization in Premiere Pro is to label your videos or your clips. So for example, here I have some clips of myself talking here in the studio and I'm gonna select them and then I'm gonna hit right click and then I'm just gonna add a label to them, maybe a mango color. And in this way, you can drag it onto your timeline and here it appears with that color. So the same thing applies for the drone shots. Here I'm just gonna label them with a violet. And then when I drag it into the timeline, it appears with the same color. So that's a way you can quickly select and quickly find your files in your timeline. Okay, number two guys is masters in control effects. Now let's say you've already edited your timeline, you've cut everything and mixed up everything together, but you forgot to apply a lot or a color grading into one clip. So let's say your clip, maybe it's this one and it's spread out throughout your timeline and you don't want to adjust this one, copy the settings and go all the way, selecting each of them and pasting the settings. Maybe you want to do it in a faster manner. In that manner, you can select your clip and over here in effects control tab, you can go to the masters tab over here and here basically you can add any type of effect or color grading to that one clip and it will alter every single clip or every single cut of that clip in your timeline. So let's say for example we want to add another step of color grading to this image. So basically we're going to drag it onto our master's effect over here and here everything that we alter in our master's effect will apply to every single file name with the same value. So basically here if we desaturate everything all the way down to the zero we can see that this clip is desaturated but then if we move on we can see every part of the clip with the same name has been also desaturated throughout the timeline so that's a quick way you can edit one single file from the start from the effects controls in the masters tab okay number three guys is to create presets now presets is not the same presets as in lightroom in this case to color grade you use LUTs. now presets can be applied to anything can be applied to settings for audio to effects to transitions all, all of those things can be created as presets. So over here in this video, we have a clip of myself with a sad face, but let's say we want to apply an effect to the audio of this video clip where I'm talking. Now, normally my voice is very deep when I'm talking in this space in particular. And to counter that, I always add an equalizer of 12 bands. And here I've added it into my effects controls. And if we click on edit, we can see that basically all the bases, I've really reduced them. So normally without a preset, what I would have to do is move every single slider every time I edit an audio clip that I want to edit in this space or any, vid any video or any clip. So instead what I do is create a preset. So we're just gonna click the graphic equalizer or any effect that you have in the effects controls and save the preset. Then you're just gonna rename it like equalizer for the studio. Then you can, you're gonna hit enter and save it. And over here in the effects, it says in presets, I don't know why it's in Spanish, but here you can drag basically your preset that you've just created on top of any audio clip or any clip in general. And basically it applies the graphic equalizer with the settings that we did into the new clip. So that's a quick way you can start editing. You can do this with effects, with transitions, with everything guys, with LUTs, with color grading. So guys, when you edit and you notice that you repeat certain aspects in every clip or in each video that you edit, you can always create a preset for those values or for those effects or transitions. So you can make your editing process a lot simpler and a lot faster when you're editing on the go. Number four guys is a very simple one, probably you already know it, is the adjustment layer. And basically it's the same thing as in Photoshop, everything beneath that layer is gonna be affected by whatever things you apply to that layer. So to apply it, just go over here in project, hit this little new item, adjustment layer, 
hit OK and then you drag it over your timeline and you can make this as long as you want guys and everything beneath it will be affected with every effect that you apply to this layer. So you can add sound effects, you can apply color grading, apply basically any effect into this layer and everything below it will be affected. So let's say we want to apply some color grading, we're just going to go all the way down to the Lumetri once again. So we're going to go all the way down to Lumetri color and here we're going to select it and drag it over our adjustment layer. Now we're going to select it and the effects control over here we have Lumetri color and now I'm just going to add a lot and as we can see now the lot has been applied into this clip but also to into every other clip that's beneath this layer. Now if we crop the layer we can see that the lot disappears and now it appears once again when the layer is over the clip. Number five guys is how to create black bars. Now black bars if you want to create a short film I highly recommend you go all the way down to the sequence settings up here adjust sequence settings and here you can select the width and the frame size equivalent to a 21 by 9 or a 2 1 or the any aspect ratio that you want to create those black bars naturally guys in any mobile device or any screen but if you have a vlog or something like that and you want to slide in some black bars Peter McKinnon style what you want to do is go to the effects tab here you're going to type in crop and then you're going to drag it over your adjustment layer or, or any clip that you want and here you can see over here in the effects controls that crop has appeared now if you want to slide them in I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. You can obviously select the time frames over here. I'm just going to select top and bottom. Then I'm just going to move in just a bit. And then I'm going to select it once again, the time frames and select 15% to the crop. And as we can see, the crop black bars have appeared on our screen. And if we rewind it just a bit, we can see how they slide in with the time frames that we just applied. And then the slide in and basically that's how you slide in black bars for vlogs or for tutorials anything like that guys it's a very simple manner and it's very quick now you can obviously save this as a preset once again you can right click save preset and then you have your automatic black bars that slide in guys okay number six guys is blocking layers now maybe you don't know this but there's a blocking button right on the left of your timeline and if you're like me and you're starting off by stacking all your layers and then linking them to crop them all in advance. So what I do when I start editing, I select all the layers, right click and then hit link and everything I do to one layer will be affected to the other like cutting. For example, I cut here and you can see that the cuts are implemented into all the layers. But let's say the bottom layer, which is the green one, which is my audio track or my music at the background, I don't want it to be affected by the cutting. So in this case, I go all the way down to the left right here and toggle the track lock over here and now if we cut the layers, we can see that everything is cutting except this one, but it is part of the same links group, guys. So that's a way you can save a layer from being altered by the cutting tool or anything like that, guys. Okay, guys, number seven, I'm going to call it a track. So sometimes we forget to add a clip and we have to move all the timeline all the way back just to make space for that little clip. So what we're going to do to create some space is select A on our keyboard. And as we can see, these two arrows have appeared and everything that we select to the right of these arrows will be moved and we can create a space to insert some clips or a video or anything like that, guys. Now you can do it to the right. And then if you press shift A, you can do it to the left, guys. And basically that's the way you can move all the clips in that direction. Number eight is another way to put a clip in the middle of your timeline without deleting anything below. So normally when we add a clip and we put it in the middle, we can see that it deletes everything beneath it. So what we want to do is just smoosh or move everything to the sides to make space for that clip. So what we want to do is drag it while pressing control. And as you can see, this little bar with arrows appears and make space for that clip, just moving everything to the right so we can have space for that little clip. Now, if you wanted to replace the clip below, you can just drag it on top or just replacing the space of the clip that we want to replace. You can just drag it with Alt. And as we can see, the space from the original clip has been replaced with the clip that we just dragged in, guys. OK, number eight is a very important one to achieve perfect skin tones all the time and maybe create a stylized look without the skin tones being affected, guys. So we're going to select this clip. Now we're going to go all the way down to the Lumetri tab. And over here, over here, we have the HSL secondary tab down here. Now, with this selector, we can select the skin tones. And what we want to do is select this color gray. And now we want to move the sliders. So every part of the skin of the subject, in this case, it's myself, is completely selected. So I'm just going to move these sliders up and down until I have all the space in my head completely selected. Once I'm happy with that, guys, I'm going to invert it over here. I'm going to deselect the gray and basically what we've done is selected everything but the skin tones of the subject. So now if we go down into the general HSL colors, we can move 
the slider up and down and as we can see everything is being alterated the color is being added everywhere except the skin tones so that's a way you can isolate the skin tones of your subject while creating a stylized look so for example here we have the oranges in our skin and if you wanted to go for a teal and orange like an orange in every other color you can move the hsl tab or the general tab over here and as you can see everything is a lot more teal in the background except the skin tone so that's a way you can really emphasize and apply colors without affecting the skins of your subject and your video in general okay last one the golden one number 10 guys is the use of proxies now proxies is a very nice tool to have particularly if your computer isn't quite the best computer out there with the best specs and when you're editing your video stutters a lot and you can't edit in real time so this is a way you can really invert this and work with with a more fluent timeline in a more real-time version so Let's see, here we have some drone clips and normally in some computers the drone clips stutter just a bit but in this case what we want to do is just show how to use a proxy. Now what is a proxy file? Now a proxy file is a lower resolution file that you're working with in your timeline making your editing process a lot easier while the high resolution file, the original file, is stored somewhere in your computer. So you're working with lower resolution making your process a lot easier but at the time of export Premiere Pro replaces that lower resolution file with the original one so your export values aren't affected at all guys. So let's see how to create proxies. So for starters we need the toggle proxies tool over here. Now if you don't see this one you can always go to the plus tool over here and then you can select it and basically just drag it into your tools. Okay next up we're going to select all the clips that we want to proxy. You can proxy everything from your timeline before you start editing or you can proxy just simple files. So in this case, I'm just going to select this one, which is the first one over here. I'm going to right click, proxy, create proxies. Now this little window opens up. Here we're going to select the resolution that we want to convert the proxy into. So in this case, I'm just going to choose the lowest resolution possible to make my editing process a lot more faster and to make Premiere Pro work less hard. So I'm going to select OK and then MIDI Encoder will open up and here it automatically starts processing and creating a proxy out of this file down here. We let Premiere Pro and MIDI Encoder do their magic. And once we finish, we can close this window once again. And over here, we have a proxy of this file. Now to activate it, let's make this a little bit more bigger so you can see the difference. Now to apply the proxies, we're just going to select the toggle proxies over here. We're just going to click it. And as we can see, there's just a little slight change, lower resolution. But it's basically the same in my computer, which isn't a 4K computer, this is a 4K clip, isn't very notorious. And now you're working with a lower resolution clip on your timeline, which will run much faster than a 4K clip or the original clip of that drone shot. So this is a way you can re replace your files with low resolution clips so you can edit a lot more faster, but not losing any percent of the quality when you export your video, guys. So those are 10 tips for Premiere Pro guys to make your editing process faster. I hope you liked it. If you did, can you please give it a like? Remember to like, share, comment, anything like that. You can always join the, our membership on the channel or buy some presets linked down below. But if you did like the video, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.